welcome back for today's video. As promised, this is going to be another one of my puppy series, and it's going to be about all the things that we feed our puppy, Beaker. Um, so I have a lot of stuff to recommend that I think in general is good for all dogs, um, but mainly the main focus of what we feed her is working on her anal gland issues. Um, if you've ever had a dog or currently have a dog with anal gland issues, you probably know it is a literal pain in the butt. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try and keep it not too TMI because anal gland issues are pretty gross. Um, but anyways, I have a lot to talk about and a lot to show you. I'll leave kind of like a table of contents sort of thing um, in the description below in case you want to skip around certain sections or whatever. Um, and there's also going to be a lot of info and links in the description, so if you have any questions, be sure to check that out. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I wanted to go ahead and talk about in this video is kind of like a background on anal glands if you're not familiar. Basically anal glands are two little glands um, around their butt. Um, they're kind of almost like um, the glands a skunk has that makes it a stinky smell. But for dogs what they do is they produce a really stinky fluid that um, marks their territory when they poop. Um, for most dogs, they'll never have any issues with their anal glands, um, but there are some dogs like Beaker that have a lot of issues. Um, anal glands can get impacted, which is kind of almost like if you get a pimple, they get all clogged up and the fluid can't get out and they can get infected. Um, if, you, if there are any signs of infection, definitely go to your vet um, ASAP. Beaker has never had any infections in her anal glands, she just has really overactive um, glands, so she produces a lot of fluid. So basically everything we're trying to feed her is to really promote um, a lot of stools, not like an excessive number. Um, usually two to three is good, like two to three large, really firm stools, because firm stools are what help express the anal glands um, and help the fluid come out naturally. And there was a point where we were having to actually express her like by hand. Um, every couple days because she was leaking fluid like on the couch, on blankets, on us sometimes, which is disgusting. It is the worst smell in the world. Um, if you want to know how to express your dog's anal glands, there are lots of videos on how you can do it yourself. You can also get it done at a groomer or by your vet. Um, if you're uncomfortable, I definitely recommend going for a professional, but it wasn't very difficult for us to do that. It was just kind of gross and not very comfortable for her. But um, we found a remedy that worked really well to kind of help start us off good and then the diet that we have her on right now is really helping out um, getting them naturally expressed on their own. Okay, next up I wanted to go ahead and go through a few kibbles that we've tried that did not work out for us. Um, the first kibble is kind of a no-brainer. Um, if you have a dog that has anal gland issues, um, or really any dog I think, but especially one with anal gland issues, you definitely want to have them on a grain-free diet, um, and ideally something without chicken and sometimes even potato. Um, anal gland issues can be allergen related, um, and chickens apparently are like a really big one that causes anal gland issues. Um, and that's something that we found out in the process. But anyways, the first um, kibble we had her on was Purina Puppy Chow. We really only got that. We got a really small bag just right off the bat for her to eat as she was adjusting to being home because that's what the shelter fed her and we didn't want to make it too crazy much change. It's also better for their tummy um, if you gradually change their food over a few days. So yeah, I mean, she liked that food, she ate it, but her coat was pretty dull and she didn't have the best stools either. Um, at that point, when we first got her, we didn't have any anal gland issues. It's kind of something that's developed as she's grown older. But anyways, that's what she ate at first. Um, then we switched her to Taste of the Wild High Green, uh, or High Prairie Green Free Formula, which Taste of the Wild is really awesome food. I've talked about it before. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work out for her just because it was too rich, and that's when we really started noticing um, a lot of the anal gland issues starting to occur. Um, it wasn't too bad with the Taste of the Wild, but it was becoming a bigger and bigger issue. 
Another thing that I think did not work out for her with the Taste of the Wild food is it's really high in fiber. It's got, I think, a 10% fiber base, um, where most dogs are usually other dog foods rather, not dogs. Um, anyways, most dog foods are around 3 to 5%. Um, and fiber is good, especially for a dog with anal end issues, but it's about finding the right fibers. Um, but basically she was consuming so much fiber that she only pooped like once a day, and it was pretty small and compact. And for her anal end issues, she really needs to have several bowel, move bowel movements a day, and they need to be pretty hefty. Um, as well as firm. So yeah, I do recommend that food. It just didn't really work out well for her. Um, another food that we tried was the Authority Green Free, um, I think it was the large breed adult one that we got. It is okay to feed your puppy adult food, especially if they're like her and they've stopped growing. Um, but anyways, in general, it's really fine. Um, puppy food apparently is a more recent thing that's appeared on the market. Um, anyways, that aside, we picked the large breed adult version of the Authority food because it had the most fiber, um, and it was around 5 or 6%, I think. She did really like that food. She ate it really well. Um, she was kind of picky with Taste the Wild, but um, anyways, the Green Free, or the Authority Green Free, which again is a good food, just not for um, dogs with anal gland issues because it is chicken and potato based. All of the Authority foods are that are grain free um, and that's when the anal gland issues really took off and got super super bad. So um, yeah, those are all the kibbles we've tried that for a variety of reasons did not work and now I'm going to go ahead and go into some things that did help the situation. Okay, I lied. Actually, I do have a few more things to tell you about that did not work for us. Um, if you have a dog with anal gland issues, you've probably googled something along the lines of remedies for anal gland problems or whatever. Um, there's a lot that will come up. Um, there are a lot of common ones that work for a lot of people, but they did not work for her. Um, the most common thing you'll probably find is pureed pumpkin or sweet potato, something like that. She loves eating pumpkin and sweet potato. Um, they're really great sources of fiber and vitamins. Um, but for her, we would just, to actually be effective, uh, we would have to feed her so much pumpkin that it would just, it would be kind of a ridiculous amount. The usual recommendation is two tablespoons a day and that literally did nothing for her. Again, she does like to eat it and it's something we do give her, especially we like to top off her Kong with a little bit of pumpkin. Um, it just did zip for the anal gland issues. Another common thing is prunes. A lot of people said eat, even adding just one or two prunes a week really helps. We, um, we transitioned into giving her three prunes three times a week and she does like the prunes but um, actually for a while they kind of made her poop runny. Now she's used to them and it doesn't but it just doesn't really help. Um, another thing we've tried, there are several supplements you can get. Um, we never ended up getting to try the Glandex one because we ended up not needing to. But the first one I tried was um, the No Scoot powder. Um, you can look that up on Amazon or the internet in general. Um, it had a lot of really great reviews. A lot of people that said they were desperate for solutions, tried so many things that didn't work, and that this was like the miracle cure for them. Um, it did kind of help at first, but it seemed over time I don't know if she got used to it or if it was just that her problems were getting worse and worse and it just wasn't really helping anymore. But yeah, that didn't really, it was kind of a temporary band-aid that didn't really help. So, um, and then the last thing was probiotics and or yogurt. Um, yogurt, especially kefir, is something that she does still get um, on a regular basis just because it's healthy for her. Um, and the Taste of the Wild kibble actually already has probiotics in it, and so does the kibble that we currently feed her, but um, yeah, that didn't really help for us at all. So if you've tried those things, or if you're thinking about trying them, um, maybe keep that in mind. Okay, so now I'm going to start talking about the stuff that has actually really helped remedy her anal gland problems. And the first thing I want to mention is a homeopathic remedy that I found. Um, I found this in a few different 
forums. And then I actually ended up finding a, um, I think it was in Google Books, but you can actually buy the book as well. Anyways, I found a homeopathic remedy um, that covered a lot of things that dogs and cats can have issues with, and they had a whole section on anal glands. So we kind of took part of that um, and used it for ourselves. but he has a few different um, ideas for different situations, so I'll go ahead and link that down below um, if you're interested in checking it out. But what we did for her, um, that just kind of loosened all the material and got liquids flowing, I guess you can say, um, and provided her like a clean slate to work with was this homeopathic remedy. So it has two parts. Um, the first part is silica. So um, it's a homeopathic supplement you can find it on Amazon. I believe Highlands um, is the brand and it's silica 6X that you want to get. 6X is just the concentration. Um, I also actually, we bought it locally at our vitamin shop and it was about the same price as Amazon and I know a lot of people are near a lot of vitamin shops. There's a lot everywhere so you can definitely check that out as well if you don't want to wait a few days to um, order it online. But anyways, you, um, for a week we gave her three times a day three of those little tablets. That may sound like a lot, but they're little teeny tiny, like so small. And what you do is you kind of pull back their cheek like this, um, and if you look, they have a little bit of like excess skin in their cheek. So what you want to do is pop the pills back there and then um, hold their mouth shut if you can for a couple minutes. That just, that's the quickest way to get the silica into their bloodstream. Um, you can feed it to them, it just takes a little bit longer to come into effect apparently if you let them eat it versus letting it like absorb in their mouth. Um, I don't, I'm not a homeopathic expert so I don't know all the details behind that. Um, what I gathered is that silica um, is something that helps the body express fluids in general. It's also really good for any kind of abscesses. Apparently it's good for people that have like acne issues and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's the first part is the silica. And I'll go ahead and write this in the description too if you're curious. And again, you can check out that book as well. Um, and then the other thing that we did that I think was like critical, I don't really know if the silica helped a lot, I just did it because it was really recommended. Um, but I think the other thing that we did was a poultice. So basically, um, I bought some Epsom salts and some chamomile tea. You can also get just raw chamomile or um, a tincture or whatever, you can buy those things at the vitamin shop as well. But I just got the pure tea because it was the cheapest and easiest to get. So I made um, some tea with that chamomile and then I poured some Epsom salts in it as well. Epsom salts also help loosen up liquids um, and kind of drain the fluid as I gather. Again, not an expert behind the mechanics, but anyways, yeah, I did that um, and then I applied that poultice with a hot or on a damp cloth and you want it to be relatively hot, not too hot obviously because you don't want to burn their butt, that would be kind of mean. Um, anyways, we applied that twice a day um, for five to ten minutes, whatever she would tolerate. Um, at first she really didn't like it, but I think she got, it was definitely soothing and she was a lot more tolerant of it the more we did it. Um, so yeah, we did that poultice also for a week and both of those things together really helped clear out all, out all the fluid that she had built up in there. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and talk about the kibble that we currently have Beaker on. And it is the Victor um, Grain Free Salmon and Sweet Potato formula that they have. I'll go ahead and link that down below. Um, it can be kind of hard to find. They mostly sell it in feed shops, actually. Um, and they do sell in some small pet stores, but they do have it on Amazon. That's where I buy it because there's nowhere near me that has it. I think the closest place is like 45 minutes away. Um, but it's a great food. Um, salmon and sweet potato foods are really good um, for dogs with anal gland issues and especially just fish based in general because you really want to avoid chicken and sometimes the other sources of protein like beef and venison can be too rich like they were for beaker and can also worsen the problem. The other upside is that salmon's awesome for their skin and coat so that's always a bonus but yeah it's a really great food. 
Um, it is one of the few foods I've seen that has a five star rating on Dog Food Advisor. Um, if you're interested in seeing that review from that website, I'll go ahead and link it below. That website is a really great resource if you're looking at trying new foods. They do a really comprehensive breakdown of all the foods. But um, yeah, it is a little bit pricey, actually a lot pricey, I guess, depending. Um, it's about $60, give or take, for a 30 pound bag, and that's on Amazon. I don't know if the price might be different if you try to buy it um, in an actual store. But there are two things I did want to mention. The first is that it is one of the most high, high calorie foods I've ever seen. It's around 430 calories um, a cup. And the other foods that we fed Beaker were usually 300 to 350 maybe at the most calories per cup. So you will um, definitely feed less of it. So that's always good and that helps it be a little bit more cost effective. The other thing that I wanted to throw in there that's kind of interesting is um, we store the 30 pound bags. We have like one of those containers meant to hold 30 pounds of dog food. If you're interested in buying one, I'll link that down below. I'd really recommend them. They definitely help keep the food fresh. Um, but we, when we had her on the Taste of the Wild bags, it probably only filled the container up maybe two thirds full, maybe a little bit more, roughly um, around that amount. But the Victor food, when we poured it in, it was like literally full to the brim. Like we had to be really careful pouring the food in, otherwise it was gonna go everywhere because the container was just like completely full. So for whatever reason, it's also a larger volume, even though it's also higher in calories per cup. So yeah, it's lasted us a really long time. We're probably about halfway through the bag right now and we've been using it for around two months. She gets a cup and three quarters per day. So um, yeah, it's a really great food. It's not super high in fiber, but that's okay. It has a lot of really awesome ingredients and you can read up all about Victor's company. They're just, they're a really awesome company. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is that we feed her in a slow feed bowl. Um, this is definitely a must for her because she's really, especially with this food, she loves it and she'll eat it so fast. And another thing is the kibbles are very small. They're like tiny, tiny, um, and they're pretty soft. So if we didn't feed her in this bowl, um, she would like inhale it in two seconds, which is not very good for their digestion. And again, if you have a dog with anal gland issues, digestion is like the name of the game to fixing them. So yeah, I'll go ahead and link this bowl down below as well if you're interested. It's pretty awesome. She didn't really like it at first, but now she doesn't really care. So yeah, that's the food that we feed her and what we feed it to her in. All right, now I wanted to go through some of the supplements we feed her and kind of like the other things she eats on a daily basis. Some of these are geared towards her anal gland problems. Some of these are just good things that all dogs can use. Um, the first thing I wanted to show you is this Nylabone Advanced Oral Care Liquid Tartar Remover. It looks like this. This is a water additive. Um, I add about a quarter cup of this for two gallons of water because we have one of those big um, auto water things. And this is just something that helps with their teeth. It helps um, basically just get rid of tartar and keep their mouth nice and fresh. She does sometimes get stinky breath like any dog can, especially eating a fish based food. Um, this really helps with that. And yeah, it's just something in general that I think is really good. Maintaining your dog's oral health is definitely um, a big thing and you, I brush her teeth a few times a week, but this is definitely a good maintenance item as well. And it also smells minty. So yeah, I'd really recommend this. Um, there are a lot of brands that do this, but you do want to be careful because there's actually some that say that they're safe for dogs and cats, but they have artificial sweeteners. I think, I don't remember which one it is, but there's one of the artificial sweeteners can like, is a major poison for your dogs. And it says safe for dogs, even though it has that in there. So if you're gonna buy a different one, make sure you read some reviews on it um, because there was one I was gonna buy and it had like an overall good rating, but then I looked at a bunch of reviews of people saying that their dog had like seizures and crazy vomiting. So um, anyways, I think products like this are really good. Just make sure you get one that's safe for dogs specifically. And I've got a couple other things here to show you that we feed her. Um, the first is this Super Snout Joint Powder 100% Green Lipped Muscle for Dogs and Cats. It looks like this. Um, we were feeding her 
one of like the pill forms of glucosamine and chondroitin that's like a joint supplement um, but this is significantly cheaper and it's more pure I guess you'd say because the main source of um, glucosamine and chondroitin is shellfish shells that's what that's where the stuff in the pills come from so basically this is cold pressed and ground up um, muscle shells and this I think green lipped muscle is a supplement um, that people take also for joint issues so yeah she's a really active dog and even though she's only a puppy obviously she doesn't have major um, joint problems yet but um, since she is so active I definitely want to give her something like this as a preventative um, she weighs around 42 pounds and she takes two scoops of this a day and the scoop is really tiny too it's probably less than a quarter teaspoon so it's really affordable and lasts a long time as well so i'd really recommend that if you're looking for a good joint supplement and then the last thing i have to show you is this um, brewer's yeast and garlic supplement um, brewer's yeast is super good for their coat um, and then the garlic is also a really good flea and mosquito repellent. Um, we've switched to this as like a natural alternative to um, repelling fleas basically. In the summer months or anytime you have like really heavy flea season, you can double it as well. For her weight, she takes four of these pills a day. Um, this is a 500 tablet bottle and it was only like five bucks and this will last us like four or five months. So really, um, really super affordable and just kind of a good supplement to throw in as well and she really likes to eat these she like she thinks they're treats which is kind of bizarre um a couple of other things that she eats on a daily basis um one of them is carrots carrots for us has been like the best source of added fiber um versus like pumpkin and prunes it really bulks up her stools but it doesn't make them soft or anything like that and she loves eating them i will either um, slice them up and feed them to her in a bowl or i also juice um, so i'll save the carrot pulp specifically for her to eat as well so yeah both of those either form is really awesome and again carrots are really cheap so not really breaking the bank by adding that to your dog's diet um, they have a lot of good vitamins and stuff as well which is always a bonus and then the last sort of daily thing that she eats on a daily basis obviously because it's daily um anyways um it's the nature's variety raw medallions i'll go ahead and leave a link down below because um they're raw so they're frozen and in my freezer and i don't want to drag them out and have any sort of bacteria issues um but the reason i like those is that they have bone meal in them which is another thing that is really great for dogs with anal gland issues um, and firming up their stools and that has a lot of other awesome stuff as well you can feed those medallions as a diet alone i've always wanted to feed raw maybe someday but um it just doesn't really work in our area we don't have access to a lot of the things you would need um, to do it the right way and the healthy way for your dog to make sure that they didn't get sick but yeah we feed her we get the medallion size they're probably around this big and about that thick and we feed her one of those a day a bag of 48 of them is around 18 dollars where we live so it's not too bad um she really loves eating those as well um and i'll go ahead and link their website down below because you can actually sign up for them to um email you coupons and i think it, just for signing up you get like a three or four dollar off coupon and then they send them kind of sporadically as well so that's a great way to try it out if you're interested in that kind of product All right, just a few more things to show you. These are other treats and things she gets um, kind of on a weekly basis, I would guess you would say, not necessarily every single day. The first thing I have to show you is some training treats. She actually does get these almost every day because we do a lot of training. Since she's young, and we're trying to raise her right. Um, these are the Tricky Trainers Chewy Cheddar Flavored um, Training Treats by Cloudstar, I believe is the brand. These are wheat and corn free, which is really good. And the cheddar flavor specifically does not have any chicken ingredients. Um, they also have a liver flavor, but I think it's chicken liver based. So that's why we didn't get that one. Um, and they have a crunchy version as well. For training, I prefer the chewy ones just because they're quicker for them to eat. Um, but yeah, these are really great. They're only three calories per thing and just like a really awesome quality product. And they're, they have a really intense smell which definitely helps get her attention and makes for a pretty effective training. So if you're looking for a good treat, I'd really recommend these. 
Um, another treat that she gets um, are these. These are also from Nature's Variety. These are um, like the freeze-dried version of the raw medallions basically. These are pretty um, expensive but they are like super concentrated in fiber and bone meal. Um, plus she will do almost anything for these treats. We don't give these to her super often because they are expensive but they are kind of a nice thing to throw in. Um, and then let's see some other things she gets. She gets coconut oil a few times a week. We used to give it to her daily but we read that it can sometimes make anal gland issues way worse. <laughs> Did you hear her yawn? That was, she yawns really dramatically sometimes. Um, anyways, so we don't give her coconut oil every single day, but we do give it a few times a week. Again, she really loves eating it and it's something that's really great for her coat and overall health. Um, we also give her um, eggshells left over from when we cook which may sound like a lot, but we don't eat a ton of eggs every week. Um, so we save those and give those to her. She really likes eating them and they're another great source of fiber. If you have a teeny tiny puppy that's still growing a lot, I wouldn't necessarily recommend giving eggshells because you don't want to give them too much calcium and mess with their bone growth. Um, but she's pretty much done growing, so they're good now. We also occasionally give her a whole raw egg, which is another treat that she really enjoys and is good for her. Um, we do also give her raw bones occasionally, not super often, but again the raw bones um, and just the bone material is another great thing um, for her stools and she really likes them too and it's good for her teeth as well. Um, let's see what else. Um, oatmeal sometimes I'll share with her if I'm eating it. Again, good source of fiber. Um, and then otherwise, just generally she gets a lot of fruit and vegetables that we eat. Um, if she likes them, she really likes squash, sweet potato, pumpkin, I've mentioned that, carrots obviously she gets every day. She likes oranges and pears. Um, she likes other stuff too. Those are the things we probably give her the most often, but yeah, we just sporadically try and give her um, a lot of plant materials to, again, help with the stools. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up everything that we feed her. Alright guys, that about wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you stuck around through the whole thing, like clap and high five for you because I'm sure this is going to end up being a really long video. Um, if you've tried any of these things and they helped, please let me know down below. This was literally like months of pain and suffering that it took for us to get here. Um, and it's helped her so much, so I would love to know if this helped anybody else because that's pretty much the whole point of why I wanted to make this video. But um, anyways, yeah, thanks for sticking around and supporting my channel. If you're interested, I'll go ahead and leave my links to Instagram and Twitter down below. I post a lot about Beaker there. You could look up um, Beaker's pictures on Instagram using hashtag Beaker the dog. Um, anyways, and I'll, I also hope you'll subscribe so that you can see me every Monday and Thursday. I make beauty videos, puppy videos obviously, doing some DIY stuff. So yeah, I hope you'll stick around and otherwise I'll see you guys on Monday. Bye! Hey guys! Happy Monday! Welcome back for today's video. I know last video I said today was going to be a puppy video, but I had my schedule mixed up, which is really funny since it's my schedule and I made it. But uh, anyways, today's video is going to be this month's Ipsy. Here's the bag. It's blue on one side, white on the other. It's got kind of like a salmon colored zipper and the material, it's like vinyl and it's kind of textured. Um, so yeah, I actually kind of like this bag this month. Um, I was actually going to do the dog video, but then this month's bag is really good, so I figured I'd try and get up sooner rather than later.